welcome to It's English by Eddie Singh and today we are going to do class 9 literature. The topic is The Snake and the Mirror. Well children, this is a story bearing a very beautiful lesson for the children. Children, you should know this story reflects on the pride, foolishness, stupidity found in human beings. As human beings, we should not try to overestimate ourselves. Rather, we should try to keep a balance between the reality of life and that of the imagination. We should try to develop an understanding between the reality and imagination. That is what the story is going to highlight. The story begins with a homeopath doctor, a homeopath practicing doctor who lives in a rented house. One evening, one late evening in the summer, when he came back home and was sitting in his room, he just decided to read a book. Having sat in his chair and a book in his hand, he just heard a familiar sound. As he heard the sound, he anticipated it might be the sound of the rats as he shared the room, the rented room, with the rats. And therefore, he once again decided to sit and read the book. Probably, he thought of some more rats crawling in the room and making certain sound. As there was no electricity in the room, the room was dark. So the doctor lighted a lamp. As he lighted a lamp and just sat down to a seat, he got some suffocation. And therefore he went out for a while to get fresh air. When he came back inside and sat for reading the book Materia Medica, a book that was uh, of a medicine, and he sat reading the book Materia Medica. Once again, the doctor heard a sound, and this time he just thought it might be so many rats. But the fact was that it was not a rat. He just thought that there might be some other kind of sound. Then after a while, he just heard a, another heavy sound and found that there was a rubber-like thing falling in the room. It was a snake and the snake had fallen from the uh, ceiling as there was no ceiling from the roof itself. He got a little scared but didn't panic. The snake coiled around his left shoulder and his mouth was just four inch away from his face. He just felt the presence of God. Though he was frightened, he didn't panic. And as there was no medicine, for emergency use in his room, he was just scared and he just thought what to do. Meanwhile, he looked towards the mirror. Even the snake looked into the mirror. Perhaps like the doctor, the snake was also an admirer of beauty. And when the snake looked into the mirror, he just got on from the chair and just started crawling towards the mirror. He, the snake wanted to have a close look of his face into the mirror and that was the lucky chance for the doctor to get up from the chair and go out. By the time the snake went close to have a reflection of his own face into the mirror, the doctor came out of the room. He rushed out to his friend's room and there he relaxed. After, I mean, the whole, spending the whole night, the next morning the doctor went back to his room. But by the time when he went back room with his friends, he found that his room was completely cleaned off by the thief. Everything was stolen except his uh, dirty vest. Nothing was left behind. And the snake was never seen then. That is the, I mean, end of the story. This clearly, uh, I mean, emphasizes the fact that we should always try to understand that our imaginations cannot be always true, our dream cannot be always true, because dreams have no legs to walk, they have simply wings to fly. Therefore, we can, of course we have, human beings have capability to change our fate, but it requires a lot of labor, 
devotion, dedication, and willpower. Then only we can change our luck. The doctor was a poor man. I mean, he was not having high income, but he wanted and dreamed often to become rich. He even wanted to admire beauty and wanted to have a rich wife as a doctor. But the, his dream couldn't be true, as a matter of fact, because he couldn't do hard work. He didn't try to change his fate. Simply he dreamed. And that is what the story highlights, that we should always try to keep a balance between reality and imagination. That is the way that we should live a life. And that is the way the children should understand that there is a difference between reality and imagination. Thank you.